I fucked up. I fucked up, guys. Made a whole 10 minute tutorial. And I fucked it up. Because I fucked up the ending. <laughs> so this is gonna be round two. Um, keep it short and simple. I made a cinematic tutorial a long time ago. And I feel like I should do a follow up tutorial on how to make them look even better. Because people have been asking me recently how to make some sick ass cinematics. So I'm just gonna get right into it. So if you guys don't know anything about how to make cinematics in COD TV, in COD 4, I recommend checking out the hundreds, not hundreds, but the dozens, not dozens, but the couple of tutorials that some people have on how to set it up in order to start making cinematics. This is gonna be more of a advanced tutorial per se for people who already know how to do this. So first point, because I got my little cheat sheet here, uh, FOV scale. If you're not using FOV scale, you need to start using FOV scale. It is the number one thing to make your cinematics look good. I use FOV scale 0.2 because it is the most similar to a telephoto lens. If you don't know about lenses, what they do is they are at different focal lengths and different focal lengths change the way we see things within the shot. So FOV scale 0 0.2 is really going to punch it in and it's going to separate, or it's not going to separate, but it's going to compress the background towards your subject. So as you can see, the background is appears much, much closer to our subject right here than it actually is. So next point, uh, keep your subject as your main focus. I see a lot of mistakes with people making cinematics where they think they're being cool by like putting their dude all the way off to the side and then making their like zoom back thing like this. That, as much as you think it looks cool, it doesn't. It's confusing because you end up making it fast within your editing program and it just kinda goes unnoticed. So whenever I'm making a cinematic, I make it my pretty much my main point to keep the subject, which is the character or the guy dying or whatever, the grenade or whatever you're doing, right in the middle or not I wouldn't say in the middle but be painfully obvious to the viewer um, yeah so there's that third point is understanding foreground and background people are too simple with their cinematics they they just have their guy there and they don't care about what the background looks like and what the foreground looks like if you don't understand these concepts you're not gonna have good looking cinematics because your shots are just going to be cluttered and they're not going to look very good. So whenever I'm making a cinematic, instead of just seeing the guy and being like, okay, this looks good, I take into consideration of what's going to be in the background of the subject and what's going to be in the foreground. So for this example, I'm just going to have the grass here be the foreground and I'm going to line up my guy on the left middle third, make a point here, and then make a point here. So we have, in this situation, we have a clear foreground, middle ground, and background. The foreground is the grass. The middle ground is my subject and the brick wall, or the stone wall. And then the background is the building. So if I play it, you can clearly see the separation of all three. Now this is gonna make your shots look way more organized and it's just gonna make them all around cleaner and better looking. So fourth point. Keep your movement simple. As you just saw, I only used two points. I see a lot of people making cinematics with like three or four points in their in their flight, and it's just it's it's gonna be complicated, and it's just not gonna look very good. So my recommendation is is keep it to two or three flight points, and no more than that, because if you do, it's just gonna end up being confusing. There's gonna be too much movement, and then you're gonna get confused. So I'm going to save this demo, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do time scale 0 0.1 because I have the, the whole bug thing. And then I'm going to do record crash tut underscore 1. Boom. And I'm going to start it. Hopefully it's going to record well. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to show you how to do the depth of field, which is super, super important. So we're back. Uh, I've loaded up my movie profile and now I'm going to show you guys what the depth of field looks like. So this depth of field profile, which I'll link in the description, 
will basically make your cinematics look a thousand times better. Uh, I'm loading up my main movie config now, and then I'm going to load up my HUD config. Now basically what this does is lets me use my scroll wheel to select the focus within the clip. And as you can see, there's an obvious foreground, which is the grass, the obvious middle ground, which is my subject, and then the obvious background, which is uh, the building. So this separation of focus is really going to isolate your subject and just keep the eye directed towards the thing you want the person who's watching your clip to see instead of having to search in because if you make your cinematic like one second that's not going to be enough time for whoever who's ever watching it to to notice and now you can see the obvious parallaxing of the background versus the foreground and just with everything combined which i talked about it just turns out to be a great looking cinematic um i record in 500 fps so i have enough frames to slow it down and make people notice the the points that I put into making my cinematic. Um, so it looks like that's going to do it for the tutorial. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a leave a comment in the or like, leave a comment below and or PM me. Uh, I'll be glad to help you guys out. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate the 900 subscribers. That's awesome. You guys are the bomb. So yeah, uh, if you have any more ideas for Toots, if you got, or if you think I should be talking about other stuff, uh, write a comment as well. I'll definitely respond to you there. Um, so I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you later. Peace.